untouchable. Gotti Ward, Pereira Morales, Morales Castillo, Castillo Hatton. Both men have promised not to take a backward step. Hatton has been quite specific in saying, I don't believe he can fight going backward. I am going to back him up. Already you see the possible implications of that as they get into a phone booth stance here at the beginning of the fight. And referee Joe Cortez rules a slip rather than a knockdown as Castillo comes out of a clinch and has to put his gloves on the canvas to remain upright. I want you hold it, okay? Let's go. The one thing that I noticed right away is the hand speed of Ricky. It seems to be much more faster and more accurate and pinpoint compared to Castillo. But I, I, I think he's making a mistake to keep going into those clinches directly. It looked like he doesn't even have any Vaseline on his face or anything coming into the fight. His face, face and his body looks very dry. And what are the implications of that, Emmanuel? I think he didn't have enough time to get warmed up properly. And by that, we refer to the fact that his brother, Matthew Hatton, fought on the undercard, fought in the fight preceding this one, and therefore some members of Hatton's corner, including his chief second, were involved with his brother while he was fighting. They got back to the dressing room late and had to hurry through the process of wrapping his hands and putting on his gloves. Yes, but, but also I'm looking at uh, Hatton's got faster hands, but they're going into collision. I think he should move forward and then maybe take a half a step back. And you saw referee Joe Cortez already warning both fighters about excessive clinching. But the hand speed of Hatton is just too much. Castillo away from him. But he smothered his work. That's the problem is he throwing punches and then he smothered him as soon as he lands a punch. It was Castillo who promised uppercuts. It's Hatton who lands three straight uppercuts to feature this particular exchange. The speed of Castillo looks like an old fighter. I think Hatton's plan is to get inside Castillo's punching power and smother, I think he's more concerned with smothering Castillo's punches than taking steam off his own. Well, he, he said he definitely wants to try to force Castillo to go back. The last five rounds of Hatton's fight against Juan Urango in January became a clinching festival. And already we see signs that this could be a clinching festival too. But both guys expressed that they, each one felt they were physically stronger than the other also. Castillo misses with a left hook after Hatton landed his. Castillo misses with an uppercut after Hatton landed his. Hatton has certainly been the more accurate puncher in the early going. Quicker, more able to get off, more keep, able to land inside. He should keep the fight at a, a more of a distance. He's getting too close because he can land the punch, especially with the short left hand shots. And catches got more careful, more cleanly than he can by smothering his work. The difference in quickness readily apparent. Castillo seemingly has to gather himself to throw his punches. Hatton gets off with a blast. Smith. How do you feel him? Martin, you gotta work the uppercut short. You gotta work the uppercut short. Bring it in on the inside. He's moving on you. You gotta use that uppercut. A square. Come in with the uppercut. Uppercut. Go down the trucks. You don't have a chance to start setting him up. You know what I mean? Don't go like that. Just push me. Change that. Change. I don't want that again. Yeah. It's anybody's fucking fight. Everyone's gonna get cut. And everyone's gonna get chinned. You steady him down. You're quick to steady him down. There you see. Ricky landing short left hand punch here and just physically his balance his coordination is just so much superior than Castillo that it, it don't look like Castillo is going to be to be a strong factor as the fight goes on. But Castillo got off to an extremely slow start against Herman oh, Kuchu back Sundown, in Sundown. January and then was able to crank it up in the last six rounds and pull out a victory which looked unlikely midway through the fight. Hatton lands a quick left hook inside. CompuBox numbers in round one. Hatton was 20 out of 58. Castillo only 10 of 44. The biggest concern I'd have if I was in the corner of Ricky Hatton with him being getting cut, possibly right, break, break, break. the way the heads are collided. Right, and there's already a red spot outside the right eye of Hatton, just as Castillo's nose 
showed signs of bleeding between rounds. Castillo's landed two uppercuts in this round, starting to get his offense going a little bit. Attempts a left hook to the body there. It's his number one weapon when he can get it going in rhythm. Well, the biggest concern I would have in Hatton's corner is that this is no surprise. The anticipation was that Hatton would start fast. The question is how will he finish, given how he's looked in the latter half of the last two fights, and how Castillo has traditionally performed well down the stretch. But it looks like the speed difference is, is so much that I don't think that's going to be a big factor tonight. I mean, Castillo just entirely too slow. And Ricky should keep it at a distance where he can take advantage of his faster foot speed and hand speed. Now Castillo with the longer arms lands a couple jabs. Goes back to that uppercut inside. Another uppercut inside for Castillo, starting to find more of a rhythm. It's fascinating. Jose Luis Castillo has an image of being almost exclusively an inside fighter, Emmanuel. But in his fights against Diego Corrales, he mastered the longer arm Corrales from outside. Yeah, for Corrales, even though he was tall, he really had very good short compact punches. He, he, in fact, he'd rather fight in close than a fight at a distance. Now Hatton begins to show some of the rambunctiousness and sturdy dynamism inside that typified his big effort against Costa Zoo. But he's making the fight not only become more closer, I mean, but also more difficult at, because of his leaning in instead of fighting at a distance. Castillo has always used timing, even from long range, to offset his opponent's speed. And, and timing is the uh, answer to speed. If there is an answer to speed. Yeah, that's when he was young. He looks like an old man to me tonight. I don't care what he's did in the past. He just does it like he does. His legs is gone. And he's getting hit repeatedly with the left hook. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, Ricky still isn't making him use his legs as much as he should. Big left hook by Ricky Hatton. Hatton, incidentally, has the equivalent of his own marching band in the stands behind him, and they will be stimulating songs and chants in Hatton's favor throughout the night. When the crowd responds, usually it will be for Ricky's big moment. This is a Hatton crowd. And it's a Hatton fight so far. Coming up July 7, Vladimir Klitschko against Lehman Brewster the second time around. You'll recall that Brewster got a knockout victory under unusual circumstances against Klitschko here in Las Vegas a couple years ago. Now Vladimir gets to reverse that, and the fight will air at 5 Eastern time and then in its entirety that same night at 10.30. One week later, July 14. Welterweight triple header headlined by Antonio Margarito's defense of his title against undefeated Paul Williams. Also that night, Kermit Cintron puts his portion of the title on the line against Walter Matisse. And Arturo Gatti returns to the ring, taking on Alfonso Gomez of contender fame. Loaded welterweight division, triple header on July 14. Power punches through the second round. Hatton 38 out of 111, doubling Castillo more or less. Castillo is 18 out of 67. Ricky Hatton throwing more punches, throwing more quickly. The more effective fighter in the first two rounds. All right, break. Oh, break. Break up, break up. Let's go. Let's go. Stop, 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 stop. Let's go. I want to hold against angles. That one thing. No, hold it. Come on, get those eyes out. No one thing. No one thing. Get those eyes out. Right, get those eyes out. Get them out. You know, Castillo's Castillo's doing right, 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 very well right now because Hedden is going right to the inside and not making Castillo use his legs and fighting in close like that. Castillo's beginning to start to find his range, starting to land a lot of punches. They're also mauling on the inside, but and Cortez is warning them, but they're throwing punches. There's no real break in the action. There's steady flow of punches from both sides. Or sometimes they'll clinch on one side while throwing punches on the other. Both fighters have built a better rhythm and tempo in the first half of this round. 
than was the case in the first two rounds. And Cortez isn't warning them. He's exhorting them to, to throw punches, but I think they are throwing punches. Man, the way they're fighting in close, Castillo may start to find in the range of landing his body shots in there, because even though Hatton considers himself a body puncher, he's nowhere near the body puncher of Castillo. He's a much, much better body puncher. Well, Hatton acknowledged that he needed to do more work to prepare for a body attack after seemingly having been hurt by Juan Urango's body punches in the fifth round of the last fight, one factor which seemed to slow him down in the second half of the fight. If you have trouble taking it to the body, Logic tells you you're going to have trouble against Jose Luis Castillo. Castillo still tends to regard himself as the number one body puncher in the sport, although fans of Miguel Cotto would say otherwise at this point. And Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. has got to be thrown in that Coming picture, along. too. Let, let me just say, otherwise at this point. <laughs> oh, there's a terrific left hook to the body by Ricky Hatton. And it sets up an uppercut upstairs and another right uppercut for which Castillo feels a need immediately to retaliate. Good left hook by Hatton. Pleasing the crowd with sharp action in round three. How are you feeling? Good. Where's the water? Come on. You got it. Move up the pace. Move up the pace. He's hitting legally. Bend your waist. Bend your waist. Move so he doesn't hit you. Yeah. You feel okay? He's strong. Strong yourself. Yeah. But he's a balance inside. He can take a little skill inside. Copy yeah. box numbers in round three, best round of the fight. Ricky Hatton landing 23 out of 54. Jose Luis Castillo 21 out of 62. That round, probably a harbinger of what we're going to see through the middle portion of the fight. Harold, how do you score it so far? Attention, 30 to 27. Three rounds to nothing for hook and hold Ricky Hatton. Jim, I gotta tell you something. Jose Luis Castillo's gotta catch this guy oh, sir, before sir, he sir. comes in and ties him up like he did there. Hatton gets off two, three good hooks, and then he grabs him. See, right there. This guy hits him two times, grabs him. And he's been doing it the whole fight. He gets away with it. Castillo's gotta catch him on the way in, or you're gonna see a shutout. Three to nothing okay, for okay, Ricky okay, Hatton. Come on, come on, get him out, let's go. So, Harold, it sounds as though you're attributing all the holding to Hatton. Jim, to tell you the truth, 90% of it is Hatton. There's no question. He's good at it. He uses his strength to shove Castillo back, but he's holding him a left. There's no question. Look, right there. Hatton's got him with the left hand. Castillo put his left arm over the back of Hatton's neck. I, I agree with Harold. I think Hatton is the one initiating the clinch, whether or not Castillo's playing ball. But, but, but the thing is, Hatton seems to be strictly intent on just bullying Castillo around and not boxing him at a distance. He's punching, and as soon as he lands a punch, he's still pushing him with his shoulders, clinching him, whatever. But he's trying to make it a physical fight to push Castillo back into the ropes. Is this the Hatton who beat Costa Zou? Somewhat, yes. It's very similar. But Costa Zou is a different type of fighter. Costa Zou becomes very unorganized very easily if you crowd him. Because he likes to have space to fight like most of the European fighters which is what he was as an amateur. Joe Cortez is deducting a point from Castillo for low blows. Did you guys see a warning? I did not. Seems like a quick deduction. But perhaps there was a warning in round two during a discussion that took place among all three of the principals in the ring at that time. One way or another, no protest from Castillo as a point is deducted from him. And now, if Harold Letterman's scorecard is in line with those of the official scorers, Castillo's got an uphill fight on his hands. Oh. What did I say about by the pressure that had been put as good as Castillo? <laughs> well, maybe this Castillo doesn't ruled. take him as well as Hatton. Yes, right? it, it is. Ruled a knockdown. It was a knockdown. Yeah. As Castillo went to it, and great he's finished on the canvas, yeah. and this fight is over.
The perfect left hook to the liver ends the fight. I think those...